Yo, it's Elot. Uh, I just wanted to make this introduction kind of video uh, for the next Let's Play series I'm going to be doing on my channel, which is Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Crazy, I'm a Tellius baby, and I have no Radiant Dawn content on my channel. That is a problem. Um, so, I am going to do a playthrough using only forced units. Um, and I want to go through sort of what that means, why I'm doing it, and the exact rules for certain things, just so it's clear before I start posting everything. Um, it is done, I've recorded everything, and I can say, using only forced units in Radiant Dawn on hard mode, it is actually not possible to beat the game. Uh, there is one chapter that is impossible, as far as I can tell, but we take the absolute bare minimum amount of help in order to make it possible so that, you know, I can continue the run and it's still fun. But other than that, it's actually possible and in some ways easier, in some ways uh, not, not easier, uh, but it's fun. I really like low man runs. I like solo runs. I'm kind of a weirdo because <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like those sort of things, but I really do for some reason. I find a lot of enjoyment in them. Um, so the rules for this run, uh, it's hard mode Radiant Dawn, which means no weapon triangle, and I can't check enemy ranges. Not that that makes it harder, but it's part of the game. I, I want to get that out there. That's what we're playing on. There's no, like, modded version or anything like that. Uh, and then additionally, we are not using any sort of transfer bonuses from Path of Radiance. And in this context, it doesn't affect too many characters, but it would maybe make Soth or Ike a little better, things like that. But we're just not doing it, because it's frankly not necessary at all. Um, and then about unit availability so essentially if you can do nothing about having a unit be on any particular map they're considered forced so for example if you have battle preps and you get to choose your units and you see oh wait a minute soth and micaiah are both blue i can't undeploy them they are forced and if you have the option to deploy someone or not deploy them they are not forced and you cannot use them for that map uh, additionally and this normally applies to, like, early parts, um, if you have no battle preps at all. So let's say just part one prologue. You get Micaiah, Edward, and then Leo joins after, like, a turn or two. All three of those units for that chapter are free to use because you have no way of not having them show up. So in that context, just, you know, we're just kind of playing normally. Um, additionally... If you can recruit someone within a chapter using only forced units to recruit them, they are also free to use for that chapter. A good example of this is uh, in Part 1, Chapter 7, the Prison Break chapter, where you can recruit Tormod, Marim, and Vika by talking to Tormod with Soth. They are free to use for that chapter. Uh, any other chapters where they might be there, but they're optional, I can't use them. In the event that I'm in a chapter where a unit technically can be recruited, but not by one of the forced units, then that unit is just not available. We're not going to bring somebody in to recruit somebody that is not allowed to be there. A uh, good example of this is in part four. Uh, no bringing in Raphael to recruit Oliver. Not that it matters, but, you know, sorry, Oliver fans. And then about the tower. The tower is the last thing. Uh, so for the individual maps within the tower... The only forced units generally are Ike and Micaiah, but in the battle preps before entering the tower, the forced unit list is Ike, Micaiah, Soth, Sonaki, Kurthnaga, Enna, and one of the Herons. So the ruling on this is I don't have to use any of the tower forced units if I don't want to, but they are free for use within the tower, and then once Nasir and Gareth show up, they are also free for use as I see fit. Uh, I'm not going to bring them in for every map, but they are actually some of them are actually necessary uh, for certain ones, especially like the last map. So like I said, under that rule set, every map is actually possible, uh, except for one. And I'm not going to reveal what that is. Uh, if you're a true Fire Emblem gamer, maybe you know what map that is that would be technically impossible without bringing in something else. Uh, but I I'll leave it a mystery for now. Feel free to guess or something. I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part one prologue. Peace.